Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Barakatam. Most High, in the name of Christ, bless you. Let us bless them. Ya Baraka Yahawa Waya Shamarka. Ya Ar Yahawa Panyawa Aliyaka Waya Kanka. Yasha A Yahawa Panyawa Aliyaka Waya Shamyaka Shalawam Amen. Show them what we're talking about and bring my mic down in the house just a touch. The Ten Commandments in the New Testament. There's a lot of people who don't believe in the Old Testament. There's a lot of people who think that God changes. <laughs> There's a lot of people who believe anything that Satan says. We're going to find out. Now, I'm going to show you guys the amazing thing. So what we're going to start doing is I'm going to be presenting you with a Hebrew word. Because your Hebrew is starting to get pretty good, Khan. Khan? Yeah. Okay. Basadar. Go ahead and show them. This is the word commandment. The word commandment. Now, remember, Hebrew is written from right to left. Okay, so the word is commandment. The word in Hebrew is ma tasawa. Ma tasawa. Ma tasawa. Now, this is what's interesting. I was struggling. I wrote the word in Hebrew. Remember, it's written this way. So that's basically, that's an M. That's a taza. And that's a wa. This M can be water, it can be chaos, but it can also be massive. This is the meaning of that letter. This right here, the Taza, you guys remember, that's a man on his side. If you see a man down, right? But it also means desire or need. And this last one, I want you to view it as a nail. It's a nail or it's always used as the word and. It joins two things together. It also means to secure. So if I'm reading this from right to left, just read those Red letters, what does it say? That's what the commandment is. That's what the commandment is. The commandment is able to, cure, to, to, to secure your massive desire. What is your greatest desire? To be with the Father, to live forever. Man was not created to die. What do you have to do in order to do that? You have to keep the commandments. Now watch, this is the definition of the word. A command whether human or divine, collectively, the law, which was commanded, meant law, ordinance, precept. That is the definition of the word matazawa. Say it. Matazawa. Massive desire secured. Man, that paleo Hebrew is absolutely phenomenal. Let's dive into these scriptures. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. The scripture says, now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which Yahweh, the God of your fathers, giveth you. Give me verse two. Now watch what he says here. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you now if I add to it what happens it's like it's like you're really thirsty right and somebody brings you this tall frosty glass of water it look I know that sounds nasty to you you're like water I don't want that give me some Dr. Pepper no it's water it's it's gonna be delicious and right before they hand it to you they just put a little salt in it is it is it going to quench your thirst? No, nah, because salt just makes you more thirsty. See, they've added something to it so it's no longer pure. That's the reason why he says you shall not add unto the word because it's not pure. And when you take away from the word, it's not pure either. Now watch this. Jump down. Same chapter. Give me verse 12. Verse 12. And Yahweh spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. The word fire. In Hebrew is pronounced ash because what does fire produce ashes it's actually pronounced ash isn't that weird it's pretty weird okay now watch and Yahweh spake unto you out of the midst of the ash out of the fire ye heard the voice of the words but saw no similitude only ye heard a voice did you see anybody 
Did you, all you did was hear a voice. Okay, now watch. Give me verse 13. And he declared unto you his covenant. What did he declare? This is very important. You need to see this. Because if you can't see this, you might get deceived into thinking that, man, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm under the new covenant. Maybe I don't have to keep these commandments. It says he declared unto you his covenant. What is a covenant? It's an agreement. He said, he said, look, you stiff neck, you uncircumcised, your, your heart is hard, you're prideful. But I tell you what, if you will obey my voice, I will be your God and you shall be my people. Isn't that what he said? He made an agreement. Okay. And he declared unto you his covenant. Watch what the covenant is, which he commanded you to perform even 10 commandments. <laughs> Wait, what's the covenant? covenant is 10 commandments because those 10 commandments are a summary of 613 commandments okay now watch this and he declared unto you his covenant which he commanded you to perform even 10 commandments and he wrote them upon two tables of stone so he gave us these 10 commandments that he expects for us to live by let me ask you guys a question when did he change his mind when did he say, you know, that old agreement that we had, let's not keep that anymore. Let's just, I got an idea. You make up whatever agreement you want. When did he say that? He never said that. So why do people think that? If he doesn't change and his word doesn't change, then this covenant didn't change and the commandments didn't change. Give me Malachi chapter three, verse six. Malachi chapter three, verse six. The scripture says, for I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. This is so powerful because if he changed his mind, he could be like, you know, I forgave you, but I'm not, I don't feel like that anymore. I'm going to take you back. I just changed my mind however I want. He does not change. That's the only reason that we're not destroyed because he doesn't change. Give me Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, the scripture says, Jesus Christ, who's the son of the most high, the Messiah, Hamashiach. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. He doesn't change, right? So his word doesn't change either. And that's the reason why we are not consumed. Okay, let's talk about this for our non-Old Testament people. They don't, they think it's old. Usually when stuff is old, what do you want to do with it? Get a new one. Like, oh man, that car is old. I need a new car. That house is old. I need a new house. Watch this. Give me Psalms chapter 40, verse 7. This is called the volume of the book. This word volume, what does it mean? It means entire collection, but it also means loud. And the word has to be spoken because faith cometh by hearing and the louder that faith the louder the word is the more faith you're going to produce this is the reason why the scripture says to lift up your voice like a trumpet a trumpet ain't quiet to some of these people they're hard of hearing in their faith they need you to say it louder so their faith can be increased so he says then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me who's it written about who's the whole book written about if the whole book is written about Christ, just the New Testament, even the Old Testament. So now that we find here in the Old Testament, he says, the book is written about me. When you decide that you're going to throw away these 39 books, uh, you throwing away the majority of the prophecy of Christ. Give me verse eight. He says, I delight to do thy will. Oh, my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. All right, let's make sure that he doesn't change because he might have changed up. Let's see. Give me Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Let's see if he changes. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. What for? To do thy will, O God. So he doesn't change. He says the same thing. Now, if, if that only appeared in the Old Testament, somebody would be like, that's the Old Testament. But the fact that it appears in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it is the exact same verse, it connects the two testaments together into one cohesiveness. All right. 
So let's take a look at these Ten Commandments. Uh, somebody give me the first commandment, just off out of your heart. Go, what is it? I like that. I don't know what y'all said, but y'all was saying some stuff. Give me uh, Exodus chapter, <laughs> Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Let's take a look at the commandment, and then we're going to see what it says in the New Testament and see if he changed his mind. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 says, I am Yahweh thy Allahayim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Give me verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's Old Testament, right? Old Testament. Okay, let's get into this New Testament. Give me Matthew chapter 4, and let's take a look at verse 10. Then Jesus, then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. What does that mean? It means... I still believe in the Old Testament. Jesus was like, yeah, I know that it's written and that word that's written is never going to go away. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. What does that sound like? That sounds like the first commandment that you can't have no other gods before him if you can only worship him. Okay, but watch this. I'm going to give you two precepts for each one of these commandments. Okay, now watch this. Give me uh, chap Matthew chapter 22. And let's take a look at verse 37. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Is there anything in front of God if I'm loving him with all of my heart, all of my soul and all of my mind? Then there's nothing that comes before him. Okay, give me verse 38. The first and great commandment. So what is the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. How do, how do I do that? I need to love him with everything that I have. Does that make sense? Okay, what's commandment number two? No graven images. Give me Exodus chapter 20. Let's take a look at verse four. The scripture says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. That's pretty clear, right? See, but people who don't believe in the Old Testament, they need to see it in the New Testament. So let's see it. Give me first John chapter five, verse 21. It's very simple. He says, little children. <laughs> well, that sounds like Gary. Children. <laughs> little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. What is that? That's a commandment. What did he command you to do? Not make no graven images. Don't be having no idols, no little Buddha statues, no little angels hung up in your house. Okay, but let me show you a, let me show you another one. Give me Acts chapter 17, verse 20. See the wisdom in this. It says, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. He says, well, you're not a statue. If you are the offspring of the most high God, why would you think that he's like some totem pole or something? If you are not one of those things, why would you think that he's some decorated silver or gold statue? What's the third commandment? Y'all yeah. slowing down in here. Y'all slowing down. and like, what's the third commandment? They're like, I'm not sure. Once Simon starts to say it, I'm just going to mumble watermelon and make it look like, okay, what's the third commandment? <laughs> okay. Don't take the name in vain. Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse seven. Exodus chapter 20, verse seven. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Allah in vain. For Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. What does it mean to take his name in vain? Huh, let's take a look in the New Testament. Watch this. Give me 1 Timothy verse, chapter 6, verse 1. We're going to find the same commandment. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many servants as under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Wow, that's powerful. What does that mean? You're not supposed to be running around here trying to use the name of Christ, taking that name on yourself. See, like when a woman marries a man, she takes his name. She becomes a representation of that man. What did she do? She took his last name. 
She running around here and don't act nothing like him. That's a bad representation. She taking the name for nothing. Now, Israel is that woman. Israel is the woman that has taken on the name of Christ, saying, yeah, I'm married to him. I'm a Christian. I know him. But you took it in vain. It doesn't do any good. You don't help anybody. You don't love anybody. You don't teach anybody. It says that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Watch, let me show you another one. Watch this. Matthew 24, verse 4. We're going to find this same thing. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. When, you. when you read that line, you think about somebody who's a deceiver deceiving you. But he says, no, I'm not talking about people who are out there in the world. I'm not talking about Satanists. I'm talking about people who have taken the name in vain. Watch. Give me verse 5. He says, for many shall come in my name. What did they do? They took the name. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. They've taken the name in vain. What does that mean? They roll up on you and they're like, yeah, I'm a Christian too. And then they start manipulating you and abusing you and loving you the way they love themselves. That's what it means to take his name in vain. All right. Uh, what's the fourth commandment? Ah, that one's easy. That, that's the one y'all probably know best, isn't it? Right? What is it? What is it? Keep the Sabbath. Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. The scripture says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Let's keep going. Give me verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Allahayim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Give me verse 11. It says, for in six days, Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is and rested. What did he do? This is very important. When you see it in the New Testament, he rested the seventh day. Wherefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's take a look at this in the New Testament. Because a lot of these New Testament people, they do not remember the Sabbath. And if they do remember it, they do it on the wrong day. Always showing up late. Give me Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4. Certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. When it says, and he spake in a certain place, that means it's written in the Old Testament that God said exactly this. He rested on the seventh day from all his works. Now watch this. Jump down because some people think that, what did they say? Jesus is my Sabbath. That's not what the scripture says. As a matter of fact, the scripture says the exact opposite of that. Give me Hebrews chapter 4. Give me verse 8. Scripture says, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? What does that mean? The Sabbath would only exist up until the time that Jesus came. That's what that be your rest. He wouldn't have kept the Sabbath. He would have said, I'm here now. Everybody can be disobedient to the father and work and buy and sell and do whatever. He kept the Sabbath himself. Give me verse nine. He says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Okay, now look at this verse. Who rests on the Sabbath? The people of God rest on the Sabbath. Who, who works on the Sabbath? Who buys and sells? The people of the world. See, we're not of the world. That's why they don't hear us. We be constantly screaming, bro, you're not supposed to be doing that. And they don't hear us because they're of the world. Give me verse 10. For he that has entered into his rest. How do I enter into his rest? By keeping the Sabbath. Watch. For he that has entered into his rest hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. This is the New Testament, right? It's telling me that I'm still supposed to enter into this rest. What number are we on? Well, number five. What's, what's the fifth commandment? Did you guys mix? Say it one more time. 
Okay, that's right. I, the father comes first, right? Right, because you're not supposed to put anything before your father in heaven. Okay, now watch. Honor thy father and thy mother. Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. The scripture says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh, thy Allahayim, giveth thee. Allahayim. Say that. This is how you say it in modern Hebrew. They say Elohim. There is no E and there is no O. That's why we're not saying Elohim. There's only A's and I's. So we say Allahayim. Allahayim. Make sense? Okay. I just want to make sure you guys understand. I don't want to be up here using these words and you're like, I don't know what you'd be talking about, but it sounds good. Can I watch this? I'm supposed to honor my father and my mother. Did he throw that commandment away when, it, when Jesus came? New Testament time? Okay. Give me Matthew chapter 19, verse 19. The scripture says, honor thy father and thy mother. That's weird, right? That says the exact same thing. You can't tell me that God changes when every single scripture proves that he doesn't change. But they think, well, he changed this one thing, just one thing. The thing that he told you to do, you don't have to do it anymore, brother. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay, let's see what Paul says, because you guys know that Paul wrote the majority of the New Testament. And people who don't understand the writings of Paul, those are the ones who think that you don't have to be circumcised, you don't have to keep the Sabbath, you don't have to keep the feast days, you don't have to keep the law. They all think that because of Paul's writings. But I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but the majority of the scriptures that I've been pulling out have been from Paul. Because Paul is very clear. You must be circumcised. You must keep the Sabbath. You must keep the feast days. You must keep the law and the commandments. Why does everybody get it all mixed up? Because they are unstable. That's what the scripture says. Peter said, if you're unstable, you're going to twist up the things that Paul said to your own destruction. Okay, now watch this. Give me Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Let's see what Paul said about honoring your mother and your father. He says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. What's right? Obey your parents. Now watch. Give me verse 2. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Give me verse 3. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. There's no change in there, is there? That's pretty clear. Paul is telling you that you need to keep the commandment. Okay. What number are we on now? We, we almost there. We on number six. Who knows it? Thou shalt not kill. Okay. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Give me Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 in the New Testament. It says, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Okay, now watch. Most people think that he entirely changed it in verse 22. He didn't change it. He brought it into the proper perspective. Says, but I say unto you. All the commandments are done away with. Just do whatever you want. <laughs> it don't say that. It doesn't say that. It says, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. You ain't even got to kill people. All you got to do is be angry for no reason. There's a whole lot of people running around angry for no reason. You just wake up mad. <laughs> Watch this. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka. That's Hebrew, ain't it? Raka. What does that mean? Thou vain fellow. Raka. This word ra, the beginning of it. If we were to look at it in the paleo, you'd be able to clearly see it. But ra is evil. Raka. It would technically be R-A-K-A, -A, which is thou art evil in paleo in the ancient hebrew so ah, shall be in danger of the council but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire okay uh did he change the commandment anywhere in there did he say it's okay to kill people 
He said, it's not okay to kill people. As a matter of fact, it's not even okay to be angry with them. He took it to a whole different level. Well, let's see what, what John says. Give me 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. The scripture says, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Thou shalt not kill. Well, what are you? You're a murderer. What does that mean? You killed him. How did you kill him? You hated him. All you had to do was hate him. You killed or you saw him committing a sin worthy of death and you decided not to rebuke him. And you knew he was going to die because of what he did. And you didn't take the time to say, hey, bro, you're not supposed to do that. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. No murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Okay, man, we getting it in. Let me, what number are we on? Number seven. Well, what is it? Adultery. Okay. How do you, how do you remember this? You guys know those first four are easy, right? You get to four. It's remember you get to five. You're at the split because it has to do with the heavenly father and your earthly father. You get to six. It's easy to remember because what do you kill? A man. Six is the number of man. How about this seven? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Let me explain it to you. See, a man is not complete. Seven is the number of completion see but a man is not complete until he meets his rib his wife when a man has a wife now he is complete okay so completion is number seven that makes it very easy for me to remember that if i commit adultery i have taken away what was complete and separated it who's give me watch give me uh exodus chapter 20 verse 14 let's see it it's an easy way to remember thou shalt not commit adultery that is commandment number seven let's see that in the new testament matthew chapter 5 verse 27 the scripture says ye have heard that it was said by them of old time thou shalt not commit adultery is he about to do away with this commandment okay uh give me a uh, verse 28 where it says but i say unto you do whatever you want just be buck wild Oh, what? that's a bad translation right there. It don't say that. It says, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. He took that commandment to a whole new level. Isn't that right? Okay, well, let's see what Paul says because people, they get Paul twisted up. Give me, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. Scripture says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. The commandments do not change. New Testament, they strengthen more and more because God doesn't change. All right. What number are we at? Number eight. What is it? Still in. Still in. Okay. Exodus chapter 20. Give me verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. <laughs> okay. Let's see it in the New Testament. Can anybody think of any place in the New Testament where it talks about stealing? Because if you can't find it in the New Testament, it might be done away with. They might, he might have changed his mind and it's okay for me to get a handful of marbles when I'm at the store. Give me uh, Ephesians. Who wrote Ephesians. Paul did. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Paul is not giving you permission to steal anything. Matter of fact, he says, let him that stole steal no more. Does the commandment get changed? Nope. It got established. In the New Testament, it got established. It says, but rather let him labor. What's that mean? If you was out there stealing, stop stealing and go get a job. <laughs> Working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth well i didn't get permission to start stealing right there let's see what else paul says give me romans chapter 2 verse 21 he says thou therefore that teachest another teachest thou not thyself thou that preachest a man should not steal dost thou steal what is paul talking about he's saying you a hypocrite if you preach the opposite of what the commandments say, you are a hypocrite. If you're out there telling people you shouldn't steal, but you're out there stealing, you're a hypocrite. What, is it possible to be a hypocrite if the law's done away with? No, I can do whatever I want. Okay. I know I'm getting hyped up. What number are we on? 
Number nine, who knows what it is? I shall not bear false witness. Oh, just, just tell me what it means in just everyday vernacular. You say, stop lying. <laughs> stop lying. Not don't lie. <laughs> stop lying. <laughs> Why is this? Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. It says, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. What's a false witness? That means I'm saying I saw something, but what I'm saying is not true. I didn't really see nothing. I wasn't there. Okay. Colossians. The scripture says, you guys know who wrote Colossians, right? Okay. Let's, let's just see if there's, if it's possible to get this twisted up. See, we don't get his writings twisted up because we're not unstable. <laughs> but now ye also put off all these. What does put off mean? Do more of? <laughs> it means do less, do none of, right? He says, don't do this no more. He says, put off all these. What is it? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Filthy, is that lying? I don't know. That might not be lying. Give me the next verse. He says, lie not one to another. Is that lying? Yeah, that's lying. He says, I'm supposed to stop lying. Why? Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. What does that mean? If I'm still out here telling lies, I have not put off the old man. Okay. Give me Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. There's an easy way to explain it. Let no, how much? No. Let no. That's the reason why you say stop lying. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. See, when I lie, I'm not giving you grace. I'm giving you imagination. <laughs> I'm being real creative. I need to just tell you the truth and let that minister grace to you. All right. What number are we on? We have seen nine of the Ten Commandments. What is the Ten Commandments? Remember earlier we read Deuteronomy. He said, even Ten Commandments, what are they? The covenant, that's the old covenant because it was written in stone. The scripture says he wrote it on two tablets of stone. We have seen nine out of 10 of those things in the New Testament. So at this point, anybody who does not believe in the Old Testament, you can find all the same stuff in the New Testament. But anybody who's like, well, he came and he changed it. I haven't seen any changes yet. Anybody seen some changes? Okay, let's keep going. There was number 10. Thou shalt not covet. Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let's see it in the New Testament. Let's see it. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. Who wrote that? Paul, we're not going to get it twisted though. We're not going to get it twisted. He's going to be so crystal clear. He says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. You have to see this scripture. This is the scripture that you're going to use to prove that the commandments are are the law because right here Paul is telling you who said it he says except the law had said thou shalt not covet the law said it yeah because commandment and law are the same thing so when people say the law is done away with what are they really saying the commandments are they're basically saying I'm a good swimmer because I'm going into the lake of fire. That's what, they, that's what they say. I'm going into the lake of fire. They're going to take a nice little swim. When you say the law is done away with, you are also saying the commandments are done away with. Because the commandment is the law. And the law said, thou shalt not covet. Okay? Give me Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. My second precept it says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as becometh saints 
if he was changing all of the commandments, or if this thing was even slightly obscure and difficult to understand, when we think I think I can do that, I think it's okay to be a fornicator, unclean, and to covet. Nobody here thinks that, do they? Because <laughs> it says, don't let it be named among you. That's not like just you. That's everybody that you hang out with. It's not supposed to be named even one time. Your group of people that you hang out with are supposed to be keeping the commandments. It says, as becometh saints. Well, that's how the saints are. It's, it's never named among the saints. Among sinners, they talk about that stuff every day. Give me verse 4. The scripture says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. One more verse, verse five. He says, for this ye know, that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater. You see how many commandments are in there? Hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm stable, right? But I don't get this part twisted. This is very clear. If I do any of the stuff that's on the list that was written in the New Testament, I do not go into the kingdom of Christ and God. That is what the scripture says. People will flip and they say, well, what about this? No, go back to that and just reread that. You don't go anywhere if you do those things. Oh, but what about I'm just going to go ahead and have a pork chop milkshake. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, that's real nasty right everybody's like I think I okay wait <laughs> alright now watch this we have seen all ten of the commandments in the new testament why because the most high does not change we are commanded throughout the entire bible especially in the new testament why 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 because in the old testament who was he talking to the church was entirely made up of one group of people, Israelites. And what did they know? The commandments. They knew the law. Okay, but why do I see more occurrences of the commandments in the New Testament? For two reasons. One, it's a shorter selection of books. I got 27 books to get the Gentiles caught up to where the Israelites are so that they know they need to keep the commandments and not break the law. But also the church at that point was allowing Gentiles to come in. And what did the Gentile need to learn? You already love Jesus. You got mad faith. But you need to keep these commandments. So Paul would say that repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Give me Romans chapter 13 verse 8. He would explain how it is that you can fulfill the law. Now, why do I need to fulfill a law that's done away with? I don't. The scripture says, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Right? Okay, now if Paul was going to tell you that you don't have to keep the law of God, he would not have said that. Give me verse 9. And I'm just going to tell you how you fulfill the law. It says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm stable in my mind. I have a firm foundation, but it's impossible for me to get this twisted. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. See, this is what you need to share with people who believe that they can do whatever they want to do. All you need to share is this one selection of verse right here what seven i think six or seven of the ten commandments all in there i think wait, let's see let's see real quick it says adultery kill still false witness covet and every other one okay so there's technically six there's five in there but six it says it is briefly comprehended in this saying namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself one more verse in there verse 10 Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Amen. What did Jesus say? If you love me, 
Okay, now, I want to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. I don't want to hear a whole lot of going back and forth. I've, I've been arguing with these people. I try to get them to keep the commandments. They tell me, but Paul said, and I say, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and just have faith? And don't say that, does it? Fear God and abuse his grace? And don't say that, does it? Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. This is my last verse. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Give me verse 14. You need to know verse 14 also. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. This is the message I have for you tonight.